Rudolphus Agricola Rudolphus Agricola, Latin, Rudolphus Agricola Fursius, August 28, 1443 or February 17, 1444, October 27, 1485, was a pre-Erasmian humanist of the northern Low Countries, famous for his supple Latin and one of the first north of the Alps to know Greek well. Agricola was a Hebrew scholar towards the end of his life, an educator, musician and builder of a church organ, a poet in Latin as well as the vernacular, a diplomat and a sportsman of sorts, boxing. He is best known today as the author of De Inventione Dialectica, as the father of Northern European humanism and as a zealous anti-scholastic in the late 15th century. Biography Agricola was born at Buffalo in the Dutch province of Groningen as the illegitimate son of the cleric Hendrik Vries, who later became an abbot, and Zyka Huisman, a rich farmer's daughter. He was originally named Rulof Huisman or Heisman by his mother's surname. The Latin adjective Frisius identifies him as a Frisian. Educated first by the celebrated School of Street. Martin in Groningen, thanks to his father's help he matriculated at the University of Erfurt, BA in 1458. He went on to Louvain University, MA in 1465, where he won renown for the purity of his Latin and for his skill in disputation. He concentrated his studies on Cicero and Quintilian, and during his university years added French and Greek to his ever-growing list of languages. At the end of his life he would learn Hebrew in order to be able to read the Old Testament, and especially the Psalms, unadulterated by translation. In the 1460s Agricola traveled to Italy, where he associated with humanist masters and statesmen. From 1468, until 1475 he studied civil law at the University of Pavia, and later went to Ferrara, 1475 to 1479, where he became the protege of Prince d'Este of Ferrara was a pupil of Teodoro Gaza and attended lectures by the famous Battista Guarino. He devoted himself wholly to the study of classical texts. He won renown for the elegance of his Latin style and his knowledge of philosophy. Also while in Ferrara he gained formal employment as the organist to the Ducal Chapel, at that time one of the most opulent musical establishments in Europe. He held that post until 1479, after which he returned to the north to become secretary to the city of Groningen. Here at the Cistercian Abbey of St. Bernard at Aard near Groningen and at Zimburg near Emmerich in the southeast he was at the center of a group of scholars and humanists with whom he kept up a lively exchange of letters. His correspondence included the musician and choirmaster of Antwerp, Jacobus Barbarianus, Barbaro, Alexander Hegius von Heek, rector of the Latin school at Devener, of Erasmian fame, and the humanist scholar and later famed student of Hebrew, Johannes Reuschlein. In 1470 he taught a deaf child how to communicate orally and in writing. De Inventione Dialectica documents this pioneering educational effort. Once in Germany again, he spent time in Dielingen, where he continued to correspond with humanist friends and colleagues throughout Europe, promoting interest in his project to promote the study of classical learning and the Studia Humanitatis. He remained an independent scholar, unattached to a university or religious establishment, this independence became a hallmark of humanist scholars. In dealing in Agricola in 1479 completed his De Inventione Dialectica, on dialectical invention, which argued for the precise application of loci and scholarly argumentation. From 1480 to 1484 he held the post of secretary of the city of Groningen. In 1481, Agricola spent six months in Brussels at the court of Archduke Maximilian, later Maximilian I, the Holy Roman Emperor. Friends attempted to dissuade him from accepting the Archduke's patronage. They feared that the Archduke's influence would undermine his philosophical ideals. He also declined the offer to become head of a Latin school at Antwerp. In 1484, Agricola moved to Heidelberg by invitation of Johann von Dahlweg, the Bishop of Worms. The two men had met in Pavia, and they became close friends in Heidelberg. The bishop was a generous benefactor of learning. At this time Agricola began studying Hebrew, and he is said to have published an original translation of the Psalms. In 1485, Dalbig was sent as an ambassador to Pope Innocent VIII in Rome. Agricola accompanied him and was struck gravely ill on their journey. He died shortly after their return to Heidelberg. Ermelau Barbaro composed an epitaph for him. Legacy and Influence De Inventione Dialectica was influential in creating a place for logic and rhetorical studies, and was of significance in the education of early humanists. It also affected the deaf community. He held that a person who is born deaf can express himself by putting down his thoughts and writing. The book was not published until 1515. His statement that deaf people can be taught a language is one of the earliest positive statements about deafness on record, Gannon, 1981. Agricola's Deformando Studio
his long letter on a private educational program, was printed as a small booklet and thus influenced pedagogical insights of the early 16th century. Agricola's real legacy was his personal influence over others. Erasmus admired Agricola, eulogizing him in Adagia and calling him the first to bring a breath of better literature from Italy. Erasmus claimed him as a father-slash-teacher figure and may have met him through his own schoolmaster Alexander Hegius, most probably one of Agricola's students, at Hegius's school in Deventer. In addition to Hegius, Agricola's students include Conrad Celtis, in Heidelberg. Erasmus made it his personal mission to ensure that several of Agricola's major works were printed posthumously. Agricola's literary executor was Adolfo Sacco, a physician of Augsburg. By about 1530 disciples and followers had gathered in the manuscripts left by Agricola, and these were edited by a largess of Amsterdam. Works, 